Hi class, uh, welcome to the online session. We are going to discuss for today the female uh, genital tract as well as the slide on the breast. I do not have with me the fallopian tube slide so most probably I'm going to give it with the seminal vesicle slide. Okay, so this uh, the first slide that we have would be the ovary. And the ovary would be paired and it, it its outermost covering okay, would be what we call as the germinal epithelium. Okay. So it's this one. So this is the germinal epithelium. So it is lined by squamous cells. Okay. So this are the squamous cells. They are flat. Okay. Underneath it immediately would be a connective tissue area that we call as the uh, tunica albuginea. Okay, so this is the tunica albuginea. The ovary would be divided into two regions. So this would be the cortex and the middle portion would be the medulla wherein you can see a lot of blood vessels. In the cortex, we would see the presence of the follicles. Okay, so we have small follicles in the uh, within the ovarian stroma, and then we have large follicles that are cystic. Okay. So I think this uh, particular ovary was taken from a pregnant patient. Okay. Uh, also, we would appreciate the presence of some remnants of ovulation, which we would call as the corpus albicans, this one. Okay. So, uh, let's start with the, uh, with the follicles. Okay. So, the smallest or the earliest type of follicle, uh, of uh, follicle, that would be present here would be the primordial follicle. So the primordial follicle would uh, be composed of an oocyte. This would be the oocyte with the nucleus with the cytoplasm which we would call as the ooplasm. And it would be surrounded by follicle cells, squamous follicle cells that are flattened. Okay. Uh, and the outer covering would be called the basal lamina. So this is also a primordial follicle. So the moment that you would see a follicle, okay, like this one, that is now lined, okay, so you have here the follicle, which would, uh, you still have the oocyte at the center, and you have the uh, the follicle cells to to become cuboidal with some stratification becoming columnar this is now what we call as the primary follicle we still have the basal lamina on the outer surface and then underneath as the oocyte would grow there would be the zona pellucida that would serve as the outermost layer of the oocyte. Okay? And then uh, surrounding the follicles, okay, as this would become bigger or their stratification, we have the outer, uh, outer connective tissue layer that would be what you call as a theca or theca folliculi consisting of the tica externa and tica interna. Okay. So in the slide, you would see also large follicles such as this one. Okay. So these are what we call the cystic follicles. Uh, they do not have the, uh, ov the oocyte. So these are cystic follicles. Another one, cystic follicle. Okay. Uh, there are areas here that would so i think this is also a follicle but you have the lining to be uh, this is what we call as 
glutenized granulosa cells. They are large, uh, large follicle cells. Okay. And the reason I, uh, I think that this is coming from a pregnant patient is because of the presence of these cells, which are called decidual cells. Okay. And these are called decidual cells. Uh, next, we go to the uterus. So the uterus would be the, it is the area where implantation would occur. It would be divided into three layers. This would be the endometrium, which would serve as the mucosa. Underneath, we have the myometrium. And not seen in this particular slide would be the perimetrium, which is the uh, outermost layer, and it is lined by the mesothelium. Okay, so let's go to the mucosa, which is the endometrium. It is uh, it contains a lot of glands, and this would be shed off during the time of menstruation. So in the endometrium. This is where we can identify the different phases of the menstrual cycle, which would be the proliferative, the secretory, and then the menstrual. So the proliferative would be influenced by estrogen production. The uh, secretory would be influenced by progesterone production. And then the menstrual phase would be influenced by the cessation of production of both the estrogen and progesterone leading to mucosal degeneration. So there are two layers uh, found in the endometrium. The, the inner portion would be called the stratum basale. This is what would be left behind after, uh, during the course of menstruation. And then we have the stratum functionale which would be shed off during menstruation so this particular uh, phase uh, would be the secretory phase identified by having single layer of the columnar cells you can have the presence of luminal secretion which would be evident in the secretory phase uh, and then you have the edema of the stoma okay. the inner portion the inner portion would be the myometrium which would be composed of smooth muscle fibers okay and uh, next we have the uh, cervix so the cervix would possess two regions we have the cortex ah, the, the sorry the endocervix and the ectocervix uh, this is the ectocervix which would be lined by stratified squamous epithelium that is non-keratinizing uh, and then we have the area here which would be lined by columnar cells okay, mucus secreting columnar cells this is part of the endocervix. Uh, the transition between them would be the squamo-columnar junction in this particular area or what we call as the transitional zone. Okay? So that is the junction with the meeting of the, strat uh, of the stratified squamous as well as that of the columnar epithelium. Okay? So it has a lamina propria here underneath the the lining epithelium there is a fibrocollagenous tissue underneath okay so fiber muscular so this is the cervix and then for the vagina uh, the vagina has a very thick lining epithelium which is a stratified squamous epithelium here that is non-keratinized. So always remember to add non-keratinized to uh, to your diagnosis. And then here you have the lamina propria. Okay. 
and then you have the muscle layer this one and then you have the adventitia layer okay. so uh, this is the vagina and then our last light for today would be the uh, the breast so the breast tissue that we have here would be a active uh, or it's a lactating uh, lactating mammary gland so it is composed of several alveolar glands okay so these are all alveolar glands lined by uh, cuboidal cells uh, there would be the presence of lipid droplets here you have lipid droplets and then the duct that we would appreciate here would be the interlobular duct the interlobular duct so again alveolar glands uh, possessing a lot of lipid droplets and then you have the interlobular duct okay so those are the slides that we have for today so kindly study them and stay safe and good night